the solution. So now I should be able to, now at least it shows my full screen. Now you see my Streamlabs setup. Um, and I'm gonna go and switch over to command. And hopefully you can see what I can see. Yes, at least on Twitch it's showing correctly. And also on YouTube. Wonderful. I apologize for the uh, difficulties. Uh, you will also see whenever I switch back to chat to see what's going on. But uh, that's the best solution I have right now. It um, is a bit clunky like that because uh, I'm streaming from my laptop, but uh, at least you have the full screen right now. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize chat. Um, and then we can actually get into it. Um, right, so start new game, tutorials. Uh, air warfare tutorial, flight tutorial, flight tutorial one, basic manual flight, load selected, enter scenario, um, just for those who will watch it later, I'm gonna delete the stream that didn't, uh, that wouldn't work correctly, so I'm just gonna read the entire thing again, so this is a basic, uh, I, I just got this game, from what I know, there was a previous version referred to as uh, by the acronym of C A M A N O, and this one is referred to as C M O Command Modern Operations. And here you see the old, I guess, what they refer to for the old game. And this one, as far as I know, is from um, was published November last year, so about a year ago. And I'm not sure why I haven't picked it up so far because it's pretty much a perfect modern day military sim. Uh, right in my, um, hmm, I forgot the expression, right in my, not in my backyard, but right in my, it's exactly what I like to do, or to play. Anyway, so uh, I have no idea about this game, I don't know how to play it, but um, it looks fascinating, so I'm going to start with the uh, tutorials. Uh, welcome to the basic manual flight tutorial. In this scenario, you will be guided through the following topics. Preparing an aircraft for launch, launching an aircraft, flying manually, the plane, return to base and land. In this scenario, pop-ups will appear with important messages. You can find them in the document that comes with the tutorial, or you can open the message history in a second window by pressing Control shift m and scrolling to the appropriate message. And uh, so now the good thing is I can show all the message windows and everything. So here you see the uh, scenario features and realism options. I guess that's what the uh, scenario is uh, configured as by the author. Uh, we see there is one cheat activated and it's called unlimited base magazines, infinite munitions for units available at air and naval bases. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick peek into the scenario, see what I can do. And I'm not sure if these, uh, the duration six hours, whether it's uh, game time or real time. But in real time, it's certainly not going to be up for six hours. I'm just going to peek into the game a little bit and uh, continue later. Anyway, let's begin the scenario. 
Good morning. Today you will impersonate the commander of Ramat David Air Base in northern Israel and you will learn how to use your air assets. You have six F 16i SUFA and two Gulfstream G5550 aerial early warning. Nonshun, Nonshun under your command. First of all, press space to start the simulation, then select Ramat David and press F6 to bring up the air ops window. You can also open this by clicking on aircraft on the right side of your screen once you select an airport. Um, I'm not, I still don't know how to select an airport, but I did find out uh, uh, during the previous attempt how to, how to find my aircraft. Okay, so when I'm far out, oh, I see that the, the chat overlay is not showing, and that's because my display capture is on top of everything. I'm going to move this up on top of everything. Now it should show up. All right, okay, so when I'm zoomed out, I can select the air base, and then it selects all the assets that are part of, of this air base. And my mistake before, or the last time, during the first attempt was I was too far zoomed in, and I didn't find the one symbol that, that marks the air base, but it's actually the one here in the center, and the white lines depict all the assets that belong to it. So, for instance, this runway, uh, now the entire airfield is selected, but if I click... Ah, now I can't go into the subunits, and before my problem was I couldn't go to the top unit. I was always selecting these individual um, assets some um, like aircraft shelter and ammunition bunkers and things like that anyway now i have the entire airbase selected i'll press f6 now i see i have two now shown uh airborne early warning uh basically flying radar platforms and then i have 6 F16 and we see so we can click on a unit um, then we just mark it and we see its status it's that those those two airborne radars are parked they are in uh, reserve status but available and we would be able to ready them and if we right click, we could launch individually, we could launch as groups, ready arm, doctrine assigned to mission. Now, could I, if I wanted information on a unit, how would I do that? Uh, not sure. We get some information here, but at the uh, end of during the first attempt, there was a way to get additional information on the specific platform. Down here we get the same uh, options to interact with the unit. I don't know, I guess we'll find out during the tutorial, so I'm just going to bring back the message. 
Uh, okay, so we found all the aircraft in our base now. Press space to start the simulation. Okay, we did that. Now we get a second message. I hope all these messages now show up on stream. I think they do. Now you can see the two F-16I have AIM-120 long-range air-to-air missile, light 202 loadout to have the Python 5 short, medium-range air-to-air missile, a light 004 loadout, and the last two have an HEM-88A harm anti-radiation missile and SPICE 2000 air-to-ground glide bomb loadout. Four F-16I are ready to take off while the other two are being armed. Let's um, double check this. Okay, so two, yes, two with AIM-120C MRAM, the light 202 loadout, they are ready. Then we have uh, one ready with the uh, light 004 loadout, the Python 5, the short range, uh, air-to-air missile. The second one of those is uh, being readied. But it takes another three hours, and then we have a third, a fourth ready, a fourth plane that's ready with the uh, with the uh, anti anti radiation uh, bomb. Yes, what do they call it? And anti radiation missile. So it's a missile that uh, will pick up on uh, ground radar signals. And home into the source of the radar signal. Okay. Four F sixty nine are being ready are ready to take off while the other two are being armed. Yes, that's exactly what we see here. The airplanes with the air to air loadouts also have the quick turnaround selected. I guess this that's this last uh, column. Uh, that's true for these two anti-air uh, F-16 okay and then we also doesn't say so here in the text but we also have um, one with the uh, short to medium range air-to-air -air missile loadout is also on a quick turnaround Actually, all of them, the, the, uh, this one as well, but this one is being readied right now. An airplane with an air-to-air -air missile loadout will take three hours to be ready during surge operations, or 20 hours during sustained operations, but when the uh, quick turnaround is selected, you will have to wait only 20 minutes after the first sortie. Search operation, sustained operations, and quick turnaround are doctrine settings, etc., etc. Uh, those are set by the author of the scenario, and usually they cannot be changed. So that's a lot of informational text for, for people like me who have to learn the game mechanics and how uh, certain things are done. Uh, the two uh, Gulfstream G. 550 air early warning instead or in reserve status that's the reddish uh, they're marked in red here you will need to prepare them to act as an airborne radar select one of them and click on the ready arm button okay we'll select the first one and then we'll click here ready arm where we could also right click and select ready arm then we get a pop-up does it say anything about this pop-up select the loadout in the new window command aerial early warning is the only one available other than ferry reserve and maintenance and then click on okay ready um we'll select this one conformal airborne early warning 
what did I say here? We have, yeah, we selected uh, unlimited available magazines. Gives us some operate uh, some information on on how they operate. Um, what does it say? Time of day, day and night, all weather. It can do its perform its uh, its purpose, its operation here. Um, the radius is three thousand three hundred seventy nautical miles airborne. Cruise at optimum altitude and speed. Okay, so this might change depending on, say, if it has to go to a lower altitude for some reason, um, the maximum operational radius will will be reduced. Ten percent reserves are included. Not quite sure what this says. Winchester shotgun. Yeah, not sure what, what these last two columns mean. Does it say anything about quick turnaround? Then click OK ready in a few hours. Okay, we'll click OK ready as it says here. And we'll close and resume. And now we see in this window, it's updated. Now it says that the uh, the first Noshon airborne early warning uh, plane will uh, be readied as well. Um, time is running. Is it actually, it runs in real time. Okay, so I suppose these uh, six hours that we saw in the beginning, they uh, they mean real. I guess, but there must be time acceleration, right? Yeah. Okay, there is. It's like in many sims, you need time acceleration. Of course, uh, we get a new message. Now it's time to take an airplane on patrol. Select one of the ready F-16i and click on launch individually. After a few minutes, it'll be in the air. Okay, we'll do that. We'll, uh, we'll select one of the uh, NT or air-to-air -air, uh, loadout planes. Uh, we'll launch it individually. And it will now taxi to take off. We'll close the message and resume. I'm wondering if we can see it on the map. And I'm wondering, can I deselect my airbase or? Doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, that would be nice if they told you how you can deselect like basic interface information is kind of lacking
Let's accelerate time to see what's happening to the plane. Let me open the screen again. Still taxing. It's ready. It's taking off now. Can we see this? Push tactical. Yes. Buster 2, Negative okay, radar so contact. See the plane. I guess it only shows in the map once. Once it's airborne. When the F 69 has taken off, you can finally control it. To plot the course, select the airplane and, pl and press F3. An arrow will appear under your pointer. Click a point of the map to plot the first course. You can then plot another waypoint or press escape to confirm your desired route. Okay, so with F3, I'll, I'll plot. So we have to select it, then it updates it. Okay, so I guess this is the, uh, the platform information. If we want like detailed information, we see all the uh, technical information, tactical information, what it can do. Doesn't have any armor. Gives some mechanical, game mechanic information. They consider visibility, for example, aft visibility of this plane average. Gives you uh, information on all the sensor support, as well as um, possible loadouts. Gives you information on on the weapons it can carry. Pretty interesting and exhaustive stuff. We'll not deal with that right now. Okay, let's plot a course. So we'll select the plane and then hit F3. Okay, now I can tell the plane what to do. Do we, do we have borders on the no, we don't. So can we... Borders and coastlines are active, so where are they? Okay, they show up once... The borders show up in yellow once uh, you zoom out far, far enough. So let's let's uh, have this plane fly to northern Israel. We can. Exit. Okay, so now I have set up a little flight path. I can even change it. It's now, now we're flying over Lebanese territory. Um, but it would be nice if the border showed up even when zoomed in. Uh, by the way, I tried to go full screen. Um, yeah, but I can't, I don't see how I can
I get a grid, okay, but I, I would like to just have uh, the borders visible at all time. But, uh, maybe that's not possible. I think this way we're inside Israeli borders. Maybe. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, uh, it's on pause, so the plane will now follow this path. Uh, okay, now I selected it again, pressed F3, and then it'll start circling in, in place when it loses its path. And as Israel is quite a small country, the plane will reach the border in no time. The airplane is following the desired path. Now press F2 to change speed and altitude. Sometimes you will need to be close to the ground to avoid being spotted by enemy radars, or you will need to fly high above the reach of man pads. Okay. So, and I have to do this as a commander. Settings for unit manual override. Okay, I can I can give it some Okay, so currently it's at twenty five thousand feet. I can give it some some settings here, like max altitude, low alt altitude, and so on. And then I can even do that for different waypoints. Now, now it's going down from 25,000 feet to the 12,000 feet that I assigned. It's at cruise speed 480 knots. Current course is 35 degrees. Now it should turn slightly more north, 20 degrees. Depth if I select sensors. When all the weapons have been expanded, Winchester. So they call the status when all the when when the Basically, when all the guns are fired, when all the bombs are dropped, and so on. They call this Winchester in this game, apparently. Or the fuel is low. Bingo. Okay, so they are Winchester and Bingo. So those, those are two statuses for, for weapon systems. Maybe that's... I don't know if this is game-specific or, or NATO, a NATO standard. I'm not sure. The plane will return to base automatically. If you wish to return early, press B. Okay. Well, I don't, I'm not going to spend any ammunition, I think. I'm going to press B, see what happens. It uh, accelerated a little bit. And it's, it's going back to... 25,000 feet. Okay, so the scenario has ended apparently. Did it already return to base? No, it's still in the air. But that's basically okay, how you start a plane and 
set a course and then return it. And we learned how to set the specific altitude or a specific speed. That's like some end games end game screen for interesting statistics. Okay, uh, well done. Manually controlling a plane is easy, but how can you control multiple sorties? The next tutorial will focus on missions. Okay, we'll close this. Um, I'm going to... How do I... Right, this way I can go back to... Um, the main screen or the the load screen I guess Kevin Kaitos says hi hello Kevin nice to see you <clears throat> so this was the first uh, air warfare tutorial I think we'll just continue go through all these tutorials unattended flight hello and welcome to the flight tutorial this second in a series of tutorials is designed to teach players the fundamentals of airplane operations in command modern operations in this manual and uh, this tutorial the following topics will be covered using reference points setting up air patrol missions setting up support missions uh sure let's get into it uh, they give us the same message again pop-ups will appear with important messages you can find them in the document etc etc this is exactly the same as in the first tutorial scenario it looks like the same cheats are active as well i'm gonna have to bring chat forward from time to time because i can only um catch messages on either youtube or twitch not uh, both at the same time Okay, so the same cheats are active. We're, we'll begin the scenario. Good morning. Today we will impersonate the commander of Rama David Air Base. That's the same. We still have six F 16I SUFA and two Gulfstream G 550 airborne early warning uh, system notions under our command. 2707 Saknai tankers and two Hermes 900 star UAV have arrived to Ramat David to support you. Okay, so that's new. Uh, tankers and Hermes 900. One F-16I is under maintenance and will not be available today while 707 tanker, while one 707 tanker is being prepared and will be ready in three hours. Okay. Um, Let's check this out. Yeah, SUFA 6 is parked, is under maintenance and unavailable. Well, everybody else is ready. That's interesting. There is no preparation going on on any other plane. Um, both Hermes 900 are ready. Uh, one of them is a comms monitor and jammer, and the other one is equipped with uh, offensive ECM to check those out quickly so they can be equipped with uh, area surveillance comms monitor and jammer and offensive ECM The max range for for an operation like this would be 2,350 nautical miles. Here it gives us detailed information on, on what that means. Generic OECM pod. Doesn't really say exactly what it can do. Like how many uh, 
radars it could jam or how many um, you know satellite communication centers or whatever it doesn't give this uh, specific information but maybe we'll find out later what it can do Uh, let's accelerate time again to establish a mission you first need to place a few reference points select define area on the missions and reference points and track the mouse to form a rectangle shaped patrol area delimit del delimited by four reference points when a reference point is selected it will be bright yellow and when not selected it'll be a dull white cross you can set reference points visibility to be normal, small, or not show at all in the map settings menu. To create mission, to create the mission, you need to select the points that define the perimeter of the desired zone. You can do that by holding down the left mouse button and drag selecting them, or by the uh, control right mouse button shortcut and then selecting define area of rectangle. When you have selected at least four reference points, then key control F11 or go to the mission menu and select the second option new mission and a box will appear okay let's do one after the other so first of all just tell us where it wants us to set up the uh, patrol area Okay, so missions and reference points, define area, let's patrol this area here, so this gives, gives us four reference points, 624, 625, 627, 626. When you have selected at least four reference points, then are they selected? I don't know. Are they? Or do we have to select them like this? It did say something about crosses. When a reference point is selected, it will be bright yellow. I don't see anything about bright yellow, I only see white, so, but I'm going to assume that, that now they are selected. Let's see what happens if I press Ctrl F11, new mission. Name your mission and choose patrol. Um, let's name it Combat Air Patrol 1. Choose patrol. Air to air warfare patrol. Leave the status as active. Right. Okay, do I change anything here? Guess not, so let's click OK. Now we're in the mission editor. Select your mission name in the upper left. Okay, that's cap one. 
Moving to the center of the screen, leave to try to keep box at zero. And the one third rule checked. Uncheck investigate contacts outside. Why is this now in black and gray instead of? Uncheck investigate contacts outside the patrol area. Okay, so these two, when they're active, uh, a plane might leave the assigned patrol area. We'll leave this one unchecked. Below you can see the settings for the flight size, that's how many aircraft we'll use, two. Okay. We could uh, assign some formations moving to the right in the patrol area box. There should be four RPs with the same. Yes, those are the reference points. Select validate area, just go to the right. Okay. I don't know when it wouldn't be valid, maybe if the patrol box reaches into enemy or foreign territory. Uh, below then you'll find the mission flight parameters. You can change them at will. Now going up to the unassigned unit, select box, click the plus sign beside the six times. Wait. Unassigned units. Okay. Uh, we'll select the uh, fighters. Check the boxes beside the green airplanes. There are no boxes to check. Unassigned to units assigned to mission. Should I? Can I? There are no boxes to select. Maybe I can do it this way. Yep. So I move five airplanes, except of course the one that's uh, unavailable due to maintenance. I move them to the units assigned to mission. I guess that's what they want me to do here. Um. And close the mission editor and run the game. Okay, so you basically you select a mission, you do some settings, what you want the aircraft to do, then you assign aircraft, you validate the uh, the area with the map reference points. You can do all sorts of adjustments here, mission doctrine, etc., etc., 
and that's pretty much it. Note 1, commission editor window is a bit complex and you will need some time to know every option well. Yes, that sounds credible. Uh, deselecting reference points can be done with Ctrl and be careful because Ctrl delete will delete them. Note 3, defining another area will deselect all reference point and only leave the new one selected. Wait, does that mean I can only have one patrol active? I don't think so. <clears throat> now let's see what happens. So, what happens now? Nothing happens here. I'm looking at my planes. Uh, yes, actually something did happen. They are now assigned a mission, the one that I just created, and two are taxiing to take off. They will take off in a minute. Let's go times 15. We should see them take off. Negative radar contact, procedural control only, maintain all. Gonna go back to speed five. Okay, so they took off, and they're now on the way to the uh, patrol area, which you can see here with this reddish uh, overlay. If we select two units, we see exactly what they are. We can also open the mission editor again, check the mission, maybe adjust it. I'm not sure. Let's read the new message that came in. Now that your F-16I are airborne, you need to create a support mission for your uh, airborne early warning uh, radar and ECM, the jammers. First, you need to deselect the reference point. Wait, but we didn't assign So we have assigned the uh, the tankers and the jammers as well. I don't think so. No, it only told us to assign five aircraft. Okay. Go to the mission menu and select the option deselect all reference points. You select all reference points, okay. Uh, now you need to place two reference points for the support mission. Go to the mission menu and select add reference point. Place them on the map and then key control F11 to create a new mission. This time select support from the third menu, press OK, then assign your two notch. Now shown on two star to the mission. Okay, I only need two reference points. Doesn't matter where I put them, I guess not. Um I don't know, let's fly a support mission. I guess we see the border slightly, but this might be a map artifact. I guess this is the border here. Anyway, we'll fly the uh, support mission here. And here. Now I have to select them. How do I... Okay, so now I have uh, reference point 629 and 630 selected. Now I press Control F11. Um, we'll call them support. Uh, well, the, the class is support.
I'll call it support one. And we should assign both uh, notion and to Hermes. Right. Okay, close and resume. Now we should also see this in in the uh, air ops window. Now shown one is preparing to take off. And so is one of the uh, Hermes 900, while our patrol of uh, F-16 are patrolling the uh, assigned patrol area. Not quite sure what the white line depicts. I guess that's probably what they're looking at with the radar. probably means that the uh, the notions are now airborne well one of them and one Hermes so let's take a look at this I'm not quite familiar with this unit myself so it's an airborne early warning system that uh, Israel seems to be using. And even some other air forces. I think this is normally a business jet. Okay, it's like a small small flying radar probably heavily modified uh, fuselage to uh, to house the radar and we got a new message the f-16i sufa loaded with aim-120 can stay airborne for more than four hours before going bingo bingo as we learned in the first uh, tutorial is um, status when the aircraft is out of fuel. To increase that time, you need to create another support mission, this time for your Saknai tankers. As before, you put a couple of reference points on the map and key Control F11, then select support and add the two 707 tankers. Okay, do these reference points have to overlap with the patrol area or will the uh, F-16 leave control area by themselves to go and refill. I put one reference point inside and one outside. Control F11 this is a support mission. Support one tanker and we'll add the tanker
Okay, I think this is it. So one is being ready and one is parked. Will it go up automatically when it's needed or? Oh, okay, so that they send one off immediately for the support mission, even though I don't think Four hours have already expired since. Can we see this? Can we see what, when? when I should start? Oh, two, negative radar contact, procedural control only. If I go into the mission editor, I can't go into the mission editor first. I would have to. No, this is not what I wanted to do. Why are they now all connected? Uh, this is the mission editor, so... Wait, 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 wait. These two I want to remove for the tanker. The tanker should only use these two. And the airborne radar and the drone should use these two. Okay, so now that's what I wanted to, but can I see when the first, since when the, uh, the mission is active? When the first unit wasn't seen, I, that would be nice because... Okay, so Flight Dusty 30 is now airborne. Does it tell me... when they took off? Not really. I see that they are flown by veterans. Damage control shows no damage at all. Check on their sensors and weapons. I see their so combat air patrols are done at 36,000 feet. They're flying Marco 6. They have fuel remaining for five hours, five minutes. No, that's total fuel. And bingo fuel is four hours, so they, they can't be on patrol for that long. But it doesn't tell me exactly when they took off. But uh, I guess it can. this information can be determined from somewhere. So this now with time acceleration five times well done you're now ready to start to start shooting down some enemy planes this is part of the scenario no the scenario is concluded you will now be presented with the eva evaluation of your performance 
Okay, so these simple tutorials I can follow and understand. Okay, that's that's fairly interesting. Um, so if I don't want to save, I could just go back to the start menu. Can start a new game, and I could go on to the third tutorial: simple air intercept. Uh, what's the time? Yeah, it's past ten o'clock. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with these tutorials on the next stream um, because uh, yeah. I have to go to bed now. It's too late for me. <laughs> no, it's during the weekend I'm working, so I'm going to take some time uh, to get some sleep. But um, this looks like a great game, like a great purchase I made today. And uh, I'm going to be very happy to stream this as well. Um, I'm going to continue with these tutorials as soon as possible, maybe tomorrow night. We'll see, hopefully I can also deal with uh, all the issues that my stream has been having. I want to thank everybody who stopped by, and I'll see you soon for some more military simulation. Thank you, have a good night.